In this webcast, we're going to look at two examples of nucleophilic acyl substitution, and we'll look at them at pHs that are first near neutral, and second, we'll take a look at how the mechanism is modified when the reaction takes place at low pH under acidic conditions. Under neutral conditions, a good example is ester formation via the acid anhydride functional group. And just to remind you, the acid anhydride functional group is shown here. It has an oxygen connecting to carbonyl groups. The substitution reaction is going to take place at this carbon, at this carbonyl carbon, and it's the acetate group that is replaced, and it's replaced with methoxide. That methoxide is derived from the nucleophile. It's not a very good nucleophile. It's methanol to make the carboxylic ester that's shown here. These reactions are often conducted in the presence of a weak base, like pyridine, whose structure is shown here. Pyridine has a pKa, the conjugate acid, which is down here. The pKa of that conjugate acid is roughly 5, and so you can see that it's going to essentially buffer the reaction to be approximately at neutral pH. Well, the way this mechanism gets started is similar to the nucleophilic acyl substitution mechanism. So it's going to be a nucleophile addition to a polarized pi bond, the AD sub n step, and that has to take place at the carbonyl that gets substituted, and so the reaction will generate this spitterionic intermediate. That's a word we've seen before. We have both negative and positive charges in this tetrahedral intermediate that's first generated. Now the purpose of this pyridine is basically to shuttle some protons around. And so it's going to do a deprotonation on that very acidic proton that was generated in the AD sub n step. That creates the pyridinium cation. The pyridinium cation is shown here. And we have this oxyanion, which is now ready to do a beta elimination. So beta elimination to kick out the acetate group. And if you look at the chart, from the last webcast, you'll see that the acetate group is a reasonably good leaving group, which we need under these neutral conditions. Now let's look at what happens under acidic conditions. In acidic conditions, we'll notice that our intermediates are going to be positively charged. If you compare that to the reaction that takes place under basic conditions, we saw that the reaction intermediates were negatively charged. So now you can see the trend. Under acidic conditions, positively charged. Under neutral conditions, we have these sphiterionic forms that are often present. And then under basic conditions, we have negatively charged intermediates. And that's a pretty common rule of the mechanisms that we see during the entire semester. So an example of a reaction that's carried out under acidic conditions is the acid-catalyzed ester formation. And we're going to use, instead of the anhydride, the carboxylic acid. And so the net substitution that's taking place is we're replacing on that carbonyl carbon this hydroxyl group, ultimately ending up in the carboxylic ester. And so the nucleophile that comes in is once again methanol. And there is something that's present to help promote this reaction, and that's an acid catalyst. The acid catalyst doesn't get involved in the stoichiometry but it's essential to make the reaction go at a reasonable rate. Methanol, as I mentioned, isn't a very good nucleophile, and one way to deal with a poor nucleophile is to increase the electrophilicity so that the reaction will go somewhat faster. And that's exactly what takes place under acidic conditions. And so now, the very first step that we have is a proton transfer step. The proton transfer step generates the protonated form of the carbonyl. So initially, we need to show the curved arrows where the carbonyl picks up the proton to generate that intermediate. Now the next step is the AD sub n step, and so our nucleophile, which is a poor nucleophile, is more able to attack the electrophile because it's been an enhanced electrophile by protonating that carbonyl. This creates a tetrahedral intermediate, and now you'll begin to notice that we are carrying positive charge during the reaction. So we've already created a positive charge there. Charge is balanced because the positive charge came from that acid. Now after doing the nucleophile addition step, the positive charge moves over there. And at this point, we're going to lose that positive charge. We can just write this as the loss of H plus 
by that single curved arrow. That generates a tetrahedral intermediate, a second tetrahedral intermediate. Hydroxide isn't going to leave as OH minus. We have to convert that into a better leaving group, and so under acidic conditions, we're going to make that leaving group neutral. And the way we can do that is by moving a proton around. And so we'll use this as our leaving group. This hydroxide will become protonated. And now to finish the mechanism, we need to eliminate that neutral leaving group. Beta elimination is going to take place to generate the protonated carbonyl and the loss of water. And finally, water could be used as the base to generate H3O+, for example, if we wanted to write the mechanism that way. Water picks up the proton. It's an N to sigma star sigma type interaction, returns the carbonyl to its neutral form to create the carboxylic ester. So what's the driving force? Well, in fact, this equilibrium is very equally balanced. It has an equilibrium constant that's very close to 1. And it's possible to manipulate the equilibrium using Le Chatelier's principle. We can eliminate water. We can drive the reaction to the side of the ester. This is called the Fischer esterification reaction. It's the combination of a carboxylic acid and a neutral alcohol under acidic conditions by removing water to generate the ester product.